thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with well, our guests, we have multiple guests today. Uh, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Kiana Holloman. How you doing, Kiana? Good. How are you? Oh, I haven't seen you in a minute, it feels like. I, I know. How was your Thanksgiving? It was good. I went home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I, I tried to go home, but then I had to come back to uh, Dallas because uh, I couldn't sell these uh, Dallas Cowboy tickets. So I had to go and, oh. and, and see my boys uh, crush the New York Giants. So that that yeah. wasn't too bad. And I'm still hung over from this this uh, this food I had. But, man, we got two, <laughs> I'm talking about two awesome guests today. No, for sure. Iconic. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, l let's get it started. So go ahead and introduce today's guest. So on today's show, we have a Grammy-nominated rapper who is known as the biggest boss and an iconic entrepreneur who has helped shape the social scene for more than 20 years. Both known for their influence and success, they formed the ultimate business relationship, bringing together their business savvy and appreciation for the self-made lifestyle. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Rick Ross and Brett Barish. Hey. Hey. Brett and Rick, man, it's a pleasure you have you join us today. We we're super honored and uh, privileged to have you on the show. I just want to say, how how were your Thanksgivings? Mine was amazing. Ate like a boss. Ate heavy, <laughs> heavy, heavy, heavy. Hey, did you did you did you find that lemon pepper turkey that you was looking for? Man, I didn't. <laughs> man, I didn't. I tried. I looked and looked though. I looked and looked. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I looked. I can't lie. I did. I did. How, how about you, Brett? Uh, mine, mine was better than Ross's. I drank Bel Air all day long on Thursday at my at my oh. nanny's house. I celebrated Thanksgiving at my nanny's house, and all we did was drink. Man, that, that sounds like a that sounds like a wonderful Thanksgiving. And so, so, but can you tell our viewers where you joining us from today? Both of you. Well, myself. The boss, Ricky Ross, I'm coming live from Miami 305, right here, baby, my city. And and I'm in, I'm only, I'm just north of Ross right now. I'm near Delray in Florida as well. The Sunshine State is in full effect today, I see. You better believe it. Ross and I have to stay close. I, I prefer closer, <laughs> but you know, I'm not too close. <laughs> We got to keep hustling. We got to keep getting it. It's all about making history. Anytime Rose involved, I just want to do something great, man. I do. Everything else going to come with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we, like I said, you, you make, you making it, uh, my, you making this platform great as well. So we appreciate you, you and Brett, uh, you know, you guys did some awesome promo for us and, and, and now I got a whole bunch of folks from Nigeria. Uh, uh, it's sending me messages on my on my official, <laughs> so I will really really appreciate that. So thank you, appreciate that, brother. Love, love, love. We just warming up. <laughs> no, so we're so excited to chat with two self-made icons today. Brett, you've been an entrepreneur for more than twenty years, and you founded your company with your brother in the late nineteen nineties. So, what influenced you to become an entrepreneur? Uh I've. I think it's 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 uh, being creative, wanting to try and do every idea I've ever had. Um, it's just something I don't know. It's been built in me, and uh, and that was my goal was to try the things I I I, I fully committed to and 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 want to do. And I fell into the liquor business, and I get to do all these amazing brands and launch them globally and try new things every single day. So if that's what's being an entrepreneur, that's me. No, I love that. No, and Rick, so you're also an entrepreneur, but I think I remember you as far back as Port of Miami. So what inspired that's you or influenced you to become a rap artist um, and kind of make your own way in the genre? Well, you know, just me being a fan, me being a fan of the culture, just watching LL Cool J and those troop sweatsuits and Kangos, and I think those double rope chains had a lot to do with it. Eric B and Rakim, 
that NWA, that Ice Cube, then just to see um, from a local sp- perspective, even though it's major, what Luke Skywalker did with Two Live Crew, and just to hear all the stories about him manufacturing his own vinyl and records in the back of his club. I'm like, you mean a young dude in his 20s from my city on the club, his own record label? Yeah, there's something we got to really, really dig into. Here we are. Absolutely. And so you both take pride uh, in the self-made success. So, uh, Brett, Goldman Sachs named you one of the 100 most intriguing entrepreneurs. Uh, oh! And, and in, yeah. <laughs> you know that, you right? Know that. Exclusive. I didn't exclusive. know that. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so your, your influence is heavily stamped on the culture, and Rick, so is yours. So starting with Brett, what does the term self-made mean to you? Uh, it means it means you're willing to take the risk yourself. It means you're willing to do it no matter what anybody else thinks. It means you're willing to put yourself out there. And if it doesn't work, it's on you. Um, to me, that's what it, you, you got to take the risk. You're going to reap the rewards, but you're also going to take the downside and you got to own that. So um, I don't know. It, it still feels the same way for the past 20 plus years. And uh, it, it feel it. I'll take the ups with the down, but that's how you get up. You you keep doing it. And Rick, I know you know we we call it get getting out the mud and and, and uh kind of building stuff from the ground up. Yeah, absolutely. So can you tell us uh you know what self made means to you as well? Just to spin on what you just said, from the mud to the marble. From yep. the mud to the marble, we we just can't accept. We understand our purpose. We know what we're capable of. We know what our dreams are. Now let's go execute. Yeah, that's what it is. And I appreciate your, your both your perspective on self-made because some people get it kind of misconstrued to make it seem like you do it all by yourself. But you got to no, have a team. No. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. No, 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 self. No, no, no. Yeah, abs- absolutely. No. So the way you guys explained it, uh, pretty kind of encapsulated. You know, you got to have the internal drive. But it takes a it takes a village. I tell people it takes a village to raise an Osby. So uh, you know, I, I didn't get to where I'm at by, by myself. No, go ahead. I was gonna say it, it's there's no question, and the key is you gotta, you know, you gotta build your army using you know an analogy. You gotta build people behind you who support you and believe in you. Um, every day, it's it's building a movement. Um, uh, you know, I've, we've got almost 200 people in our company and, and every day they're, they're out beating the street. And as Ross says, you both said it's mud to marble. It's trying to make something out of nothing. And it, it, you wouldn't be here without all those people building that network. It would never happen without that. And me and some on that is once again, um, teamwork, make the dream work. You know what I mean? Yeah, if I'm out there in the field making it home is being self-made, but you don't got a chance without your brother and that loyalty yeah. with your brotherhood. Because y'all dropping bars on Chief Chat today. That's what I'm talking about. Chief Chat on fire. Chief Chat on fire. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what, uh, Ross, I think you'd agree. What I find really appealing is it's like even with the brands, even with Bel Air, the Black Bottle, you know, even when right. you first noticed it, it's like that feeling of you've done something, you've achieved something, you've created something, you've, and you got to sell it. At the end of the day, you got to celebrate you. You got to own it, you know? And, not, and I think not, not Ross, to cut you off, Ross, Brett. Not to cut you off, but ever since I was a kid, when the NBA championships was won, the locker room, <laughs> the bottles came out. Yeah. The bottles came out. The NFL parades, the bottom, the, the parades can't, you know, and I can't, I know the Dolphins, let's not get into that. We never won a Super Bowl. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> but the, the champagne always represented for me success, Correct. the winning. Correct. So when I got on South Beach for the first time, and, you know, may, may, you know, may his, you know, may he rest in paradise, but Prince, Prince on the club on Collins Avenue. When I went in the club for the first time, I'm like, God damn, man, this, if this were winning is, I got to win. Correct. I want to see me and my homies win. We deserve to win. 
We done dug in these fast, fast food bags long enough. It's time to come out here and shit. We can handle some business in these clubs too. So that's what I, uh, my connection was. And so one of my earliest nicknames was Rosé. You know what I mean? And that's that pink champagne. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that's how me and Brett was actually introduced. It's Rosé and, Bottle. And that's the beauty of our relationship is everything everything I do is organic. And these brands allow me and, and Ross to meet people that we never would have otherwise. And the connection is these brands. They mean something to people. Um, the whole ethos is that self-made mentality where where there's a there's a connection. You get it. It's not just you're drinking a product. You're you know there there are people. That's why I love. If you ever saw Chief the the Gucci main uh, uh, amazing images of Gucci main holding the blue bottle, Ross. You know oh, Gucci yeah, doesn't yeah. even drink, but the beauty is he wants to be associated because he freaking did it. He made it. And that's what these brands mean. And that, that's a powerful statement. Facts. No, I love that you mentioned that because the both of you kind of set the standard for anyone who is trying to pursue a higher level of success and enjoy the fruits of their labor, right? So Brett, what is it about the hip hop industry that allowed your business to kind of scale even further? I, I think, well, for me, everything I do, it has to, I can't fake it. It's got to be real. And for me, um, I'm a huge fan of hip hop, but I'm more importantly, I'm a huge fan of the artist and that idea that, think about it, everybody, whether it's Ross or Wayne or, or, or Wiz or Khaled, these aren't guys who were born into anything. They had to go and do it themselves their own way. You know, we have a saying with even within our company, we don't we don't follow trends. We set trends. And that's what the, all these guys do. They create a trend on their own. They make the movement. They get people to follow something that they believe in. And it's always, you know, and it's always funny because you're always mentioning one person when it comes to hip hop. It's not a group. It's always one person. So to me, it's inspiring and it's always been inspiring. So it's an easy transition if I can work with people that support our brands and, and that, that get what we're doing like Ross does, boy, one plus one is three. Let's go. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And Rick, what are your observations of the influence that you and Brent have been able to make over the last 10 plus years? Well, you know, like I said, um, you know, I've been in the game for so many years before I felt like I was ever rewarded. So when I actually came across my first hit record, that was 06, 07. You know, I'm, I'm partying everywhere. I got the biggest record in the streets. I'm getting champagne sent from all the TV stars, actors, actresses in the club, so on and so forth. But I party one night with this bottle that uh, a friend of mine, DJ Clue, DJ Clue, he was with Rockefeller at the time. He sent me a bottle of those and a party I had that night. I woke up that next morning and I, I I reached out to him, homie, what was that I was drinking? Oh, that was ballet. I know the homie, he cool too, Brett. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I need me some more of those bottles. So, but when <laughs> I actually met Brett, yeah, 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 I'm just keeping it 3,000 when yeah. I actually met Brett. And I seen he was into the culture. He was into the art form. He did dress weird. You know, he would have on some <laughs> weird shit. You know what I'm saying? But he'll have on some shell toe Adidas or something like that. And then, you know, we just stayed in touch. And so um, me getting the, the witness, the organic side of the business merged with the culture and seeing the, the, the uh, you know, just the vibe in the clubs, in the parties. And man, just to get to see that, because I don't know anybody that got to see that growth of Don Perry on, you know what I mean? And got to become a part of that movement. That's history. So I really feel like we making history right now. And as much as I love the party growing up in Miami, man, I do it every night anyway. You know what I mean? So it's really hey, organic and it's the best at the highest level. I want to, I want to add, I think that's the key is what Ross said. This isn't, you, you can't fake this stuff. You can't fake your appreciation or your love for a brand. You know, you, you got to be either all in or forget it. And Ross and everybody we've worked with, they're all in, you know, whether it's Bel Air or Bamboo, which is in like 80 countries now, it's the number one premium rum in the world, or Bel Air, which is outsells every single champagne in the US. Um, you know, everyone we're involved in, 
they're they're committed to this. Um, and the beauty, I think what I love the most is what you both said is 10 plus years, Ross and I have been together and we're, we talk about the next 10 years. So the goal isn't to have a finite period on this. The goal is to build on, keep building, keep building every day. That's the, that's the inspiration Ross gives me every day. And I, I hope I give him the same. You be wearing weird clothes, but the inspiration is there. The inspiration is there. I'm going to give you that. Really? As my 93 year old mother says, Ross, we are we are different, and that's okay. <laughs> Listen, I, I I love to hear the parallels of 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 just the military lifestyle compared to what you what you just got to explain, especially what Rick was explaining about uh you know get forming relationships with people that you probably you know had you not been in this field or or this 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 realm of life. You wouldn't have even thought to go to Brett and 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 build this partnership. And the same thing in military, we 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 come together from all walks of life, from from different places throughout the country, and we have to work as a team for the for the mission. And so uh, I always love to to kind of hear stories and then draw parallels to what we kind of deal with in military lifestyle. But but I so, think I, I think, and sorry, Chief, I just want to just add to your comment. You know, I, I'm not, I was not in the, the military services, but I get that. And the key is, you know, yeah. is getting, getting people all on the same plane, getting them all driving in the same direction, you know, whether it's, whether it's your employees, whether it's brand ambassadors, whether it's salespeople, but getting people to believe in something, that's the key. That's the key. And, mm-hmm. and I think, you know, between someone like Ross and me, you know, that's our goal is to getting people behind us. Um, and as you said, it's from all walks of life. I'm not in the music business. I'm in the liquor business. That's my that's my lane. Ross is in the music business, but we can come together and do something pretty unique where we both add value. And I think it's exactly what you're speaking to. Absolutely. And uh, kind of speaking of America's armed forces, man, we got plenty of folks watching from all over the world. Uh, and I want to kind of what's give sadness? you all- What's happening? What's happening? What's <laughs> happening? Yeah, I want to give y'all an opportunity to share a message with them or, or give them a shout out or show some love to our military community today. Oh, hey, man. Ross, let's, not- wait, Ross, let's do it properly. Why don't you, for, let's go one by one. You've got to give a shout out to, to all the soldiers, all the airmen. That's too easy. That's too easy. I want to send a big salute and a major love respect and appreciation from the boss Ricky Rose to everybody that's on this chat, everybody that's on that line, everybody that's that's willing to sacrifice their, their lives for what they believe in, for our country, our people. And man, it's no higher salute, uh, no higher sacrifice you can make and you are greatly appreciated. And that's from the boss Ricky Rose. And don't let nobody try to fool you or tell you no different, damn it. That's what I'm talking about. And I, I'll say the same, all the soldiers, all the airmen, all the guardians, all the Marines, the sailors, the Coast Guard, the military families, um, to my dad, who was a lieutenant, uh, your sacrifice is, is, uh, is, is just amazing. What you've given us, what you continue to give us, uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Um, we support you 100%, and it's it's all love, all love. You better believe it. I'm happy to be on here, and if there's anything Rose could do, y'all may have to put me on one of them beautiful jets, baby, and fly me out. I'll come we shut down the base. <laughs> we got you, Rose. It, it ain't as comfortable no. as your... Uh, some of those planes we got ain't as comfortable as your private jet. I can tell you that, but but we'll we'll put we'll put a helmet on your head and get you a, a flag vest and, and take care of you, man. We'll, we'll treat you the right way. Hey, well, hey Ron, the Navy game is December sixth. Should we go? Let's go. <laughs> Listen, long, hey Brett, as long as as long as you gonna parachute out of one of the planes with your <laughs> funny overalls on. If you do that, I'm going to fly in and I'm going to be down with my dogs and I'm going to rock that stage for real. There you go. There you go. Listen, we will be in the house for the Army and Navy game. The exchange will be in the house for the Army and Navy game uh, in, in Philadelphia. So looking forward to that, too. That's big.
But as Ro Chief, as Ross said, anything we could possibly do to help support your efforts, to support all the, the servicemen, please ask us. And women, please ask us because we're, we're, we're there for you. Yeah, no, this, this is huge in itself. Just, you know, giving us a little bit of time to kind of, you know, walk your journeys and, and tell us your stories and, and connect with us. You know, I, I, I think this is huge in itself, but we definitely uh, appreciate the offer. And, and I always tell everybody that I talk to, you know, we do a lot of sacrificing, but uh, the, the, the things that you all do to inspire us or to take us our mind away from all this craziness we're dealing with, you know, with, with music, because music is huge, of course. Um, and, and so is alcohol, uh, by the way, <laughs> but but uh, responsibly drinking alcohol. Absolutely. But, uh, right, right, right. To, to, yeah. But all these things that, that you all do to 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 keep us going on a day to day basis, because, uh, you know, music is very therapeutic. Uh, I'm sure it's therapeutic for you to even create the music yeah. or for us to listen yeah. to it. It takes us back to when we were smaller or getting into a place where we, we don't normally go to. And we, we need that as well as service members. So thank you all. Thank you both. Man, I'm I'm happy to be of of service myself. And like I said, if it's anything I could do, man, anything. And I mean that. You know what I mean? So everybody tuned Appreciate in that. once again. You know, thank the boss for bringing me on this chat. And I'll make sure we chat again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. No, so you guys have a ton of comments. Um, I'm just going to read a several. They're coming in pretty quick, so bear with me. But... Brianna says two of the best. Eddie says the boss is in the building. Ozell says he has a great business plan. Let's connect, Ross. And we right. guys. And let's see. My mom, she's watching. <laughs> she, she said it takes a real village chief. Um, Angela says, or I'm sorry, Angel says, I seen the boss Rick Ross in Rotterdam this summer. Mr. Ross is still the CEO of Wingstops from Eddie. We got a lot of tears, emojis, and bottles in the chat. Tons. Shouts out from Germany. Steven says Aston Martin music. Oh, that's a classic. That's a classic. Um, nice. Nicholas says Woot Woot from Hawaii. Um, let's see. Nick says God bless you all. Steven says that's real talk. And we have some more. Germany shout out. So everyone from all over the world is watching and tuned in okay. to you guys. And I have to say, obsessed with you, Rick Ross. I've been a huge fan since I was young, like young, young, like 2005, I was 10 years old. <laughs> and I was like, your music and the whole Maybach music group wave inspired me a lot. Like I would listen to Wale's Ambition album, like on a loop. I love Pandemonium. That's one of my favorite tracks. Any of the collab albums y'all had, love it. So yeah, so excited. I'm fangirling a little bit over here for sure. And Brett, that's all. That's all I got for you. <laughs> we here. <laughs> hey, I got a I got a comment too on my page. Uh, Vincent Conde said that the the Bel Air is like lemon pepper in a bottle. So that's my first Ooh. time hearing you know, those two together. But we, I'll take this. <laughs> Don't do it. 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 Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if that should that be a line extension? <laughs> what yeah, yeah, I don't know if lemon pepper in a in, in a bell air bottle would, would go well together, but he, no, I, I no, understand no, what he's no. trying to say. He's trying to he's trying to say yeah. they are both iconic and bringing it together. Oh, without a doubt. Without without yeah. a doubt. Without a doubt. We with that. We with that. So Brent, uh, not only are you an innovative icon, uh, but you also host your own podcast, uh, Self Made with Brett Bears, uh, where you conduct iconic interviews with influential figures, including DJ Khaled, Post Malone, uh, Lil Wayne, uh, Steve Aoki. Uh, what is the premise of the show and what can fans, uh, when can fans expect more interviews? So uh, I started, gosh, it's been five years now, which is pretty amazing, um, before all the podcasts and everything. And it was me realizing that my that the brands, as I said, mean something to people, that you've achieved it. And I wanted to hear, you know, you always assume when you see someone like Ross, when you see someone like Wayne, when you see something like, like Wiz or Khaled or any of these guys, they're famous. And boy, they look feels like they've always been famous and it was easy, but it wasn't. And what I like to get it is I just like to hear the crap that they went through to get there, the struggle that they went through to get there. You know, when Khaled was just selling 
mixtapes out of his car when when Nipsey would tell me he'd just pop his trunk in Camden, you know, and just sell the goods because that's how he had to do it. When Ross tells me how, you know, he, he, he uh, Ross, you remember the story you, you, uh, you performed at a, a concert where uh, Andre 3000 was, uh, was one of the, the, the judges, the you, know, just the, right. you know, and, and for me even, uh, you know, and I tell people this all the time, because I think it's important. They know I lost my house. I put all my money back in this business. Uh, when it wasn't working and I had the bank sweep my account uh, to take the house. I had my bank account swept by the IRS. It sucked. And it was a hard process to get there. But that's the part that I think is inspiring because it shows, you know, people go through crap, but you get there. You get there on the other side. So it, to me, it gives hope and inspiration. Yeah, no, it's it's so important to document your failures. Uh, I tell this to my airmen all the time is, uh, you know, it's always good to see, OK, yeah, Chief Chief is up here. He's on the wall. He made it this far. But uh, me telling my story uh, connects with those people, uh, co connects with those airmen a lot more than it does me just t telling, showing the, the, the success. Right. And so uh, I'm glad you're able to kind of dig deep uh, in, in those stories to, to show people that, listen, life ain't always luxurious. It ain't always rainbows and sunshine like you got to you got to go through some stuff it, it, it don't matter what you, what you see on the on, on the Instagram post or, or whatever the case may be. We, we go through some stuff to get to this point. And so, man, just just hearing those stories, I, I get lost in the, the Facebook watch uh, algorithm because I'm I love watching podcasts like yours and and other ones where I get to hear those stories of folks uh, being actually human because you're humanizing a celebrity, you know, because you put, you put celebrities you're, on the you're, making, you're correct. And you're, you're making it. I was going to say, you know, for me, you know, it, the 20 year old Brett would have loved to hear stories about successful people. But the, again, the crap that they went through to get there, because it wasn't easy. Maybe for some people it is, but for most, it's not. It's you got to you got to, as you said, you got to make mistakes to get there. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's the, that's how you improve. That's how you do better. That's how you learn. Um, and every day in Ross knows every day we're doing something that we're not going to do again tomorrow, but we learn from it. So, and it's it's worked in our favor every single step of the way. Oh, we got Kiana. So I do have a another question for you guys, just more along the lines of your success. So you both are, you know, icons in your respective industry. So Brett. The liquor industry was what it was when you chimed in and when you came in it was full force and you changed it forever and the same thing for you rick hip-hop has not been the same since you stepped foot in major mark you know it's your influence <laughs> is just so <laughs> so question for both of you. when it comes to wanting to start something new maybe it's a new project or maybe we have military families who are interested in entrepreneurship or just taking whatever step in their careers to the next level what's that motivation to not only just get in and kind of kick it, but like get in and make a way for yourself, make a name for yourself and keep that success going. Well, you want to go rough? For, you know, I love to go first sometimes. <laughs> Brett, I, dress than Brett. I dress better than Brett. But um, <laughs> yeah, you know, as far as when, when it comes to myself and the way, when it comes to my dreams, my aspirations, my ideas, I really believe in, let's take them personal. Let's really take them personal. Let's take this personal. We serious people and our dreams are serious. Our realities are serious. And by me watching something go from nothing to something great, yo, I, I try to tell this as much as possible. Don't you ever stop. Don't you ever quit. Don't you ever goddamn turn your back on yourself. You got to be there for yourself. And, and trust me, this shit is much realer than you could ever imagine. All the times I was watching awards and damn feel like my eyes was tearing up when they going to realize the biggest boss. You feel me? But I kept telling myself, don't stop, homie. Don't stop. And really, a lot of times, man, when you feel in that pressure, you really are, believe it or not, much closer than you could ever fathom. I think for for everything Ross said speaks to me. I think I, I've got a bunch of sayings that I live by. Um, everything from 
you know, don't be afraid to fail uh, from, you know, the idea that that you got to you can't be anybody else. You can't you can't you know, we're I'm in the liquor business, as you said, and there's giant companies in my space. I can't be them. I don't want to be them. I got to be me. And that's the hardest part to stepping out on your own is trusting your own instincts. It's if, if you have the idea, you don't run with it. If you start changing it to somebody else's idea and the way that they're doing it, that's not you. You got to stick to your gun, stick to what you believe. And that's the way you're going to get there. Um, that That's the way we have. That's the way I have. And it's based on, again, I got to trust my instincts. Um, that's the key to our success. So, so I got a, a, a follow on question because uh, in you, we talk about I guess mental health a lot in uh in in especially in the military culture, but now even more so than ever. Um, and, and I know you all have some really really like bright big personalities, and so and it's sometimes it's hard to stay on all the time. So what what ha- how do you get yourself ready when you have to go on, but you 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 going through some stuff uh, in, internally like. And you know what, for me, even being the biggest boss in the game, we all have to hit that recharge button at some times. That motivation runs low and that's on regardless of what it is. And you just got to understand yourself, understand yourself, get yourself whatever it is you need. And for me, yo, it's just how I, you know, zoom out, vibe out, yo, it's, it's, it's much more centered around the things I love. You know what I mean? So when you see me sitting in the studio right now, this is me spending time with myself, really just, you know, uh, recharging myself. That's it. This will make me feel the best. This when I get to express myself. I could turn up the tempo. We could turn it up. We could slow it down. We can address anything on our mind, anything on our heart, anything we feel, anything we going through. And it's right here. So when I'm sitting right here, and this is where I've been from yesterday, like you know what I mean? So yeah. um, that's what I do. And we all have different ways of recharging our batteries. But when your battery get low, you got to plug yourself into the wall and just understand that's what it is. It's not that you're weak. It's not that you're not strong. No, we all go through that. You got let's recharge that battery. And whatever that take, let's take those measures. Absolutely. I think, Chief, for me, it's, it's i try to i think the more transparent you are and the more you can talk to other people the better they give me energy so even someone even ross even uh, you know there are friends there's family there's people that i surround myself with where i know they're going to give me inspiration i know ross will send me a a text or a comment or a note there's something which gets me going gets me charged again gives me that it's that kick of adrenaline and we all need it. We all need it. Um, and I try my best to always be around people who give me that inspiration. And I'll be honest, the self-made series, you know, selfishly, I do that for that reason. You know, there's nothing better. I remember listening to, to one up and coming artist telling me he just bought it. He just got a new apartment. It's half decorated. I asked why. He says, I don't want to feel comfortable. I can't feel comfortable. I got to feel like I got to earn more. You know, that's motivating. I need that inspiration. I need I need to hear those stories because that's what gets my battery charged again. So we talked about the podcast. Rick is in the studio right now, assuming he's working on some some new heat for us. <laughs> but where Better can we go? It. We are. Better believe it. I'm so excited for that. So excited. Okay. <laughs> but for everyone watching. Hey, Hey, Dave! <laughs> <laughs> so, for everyone watching, where can they go to follow you guys and all the amazing leaders you post on your Instagram, your Facebook, and all that stuff? Well, on my page, I'm going first since I dress the best. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> travel, page. You know, anybody else that's watching, feel free, send me DMs. I'm gonna get on my page, maybe hopefully in the next hour. Send me some DMs. Let's stay in touch. We can have us a virtual toast. Um, I'm gonna have my. Uh, I'm finna bust this bottle open. I'm just finishing this record up, and you know we doing this room call. But most definitely, man, let's stay in touch. 
I'm on Instagram more than anything else. My Twitter, Rick Ross. But like I say, my IG. And uh, let's have us a toast. Toast to everybody that's tuned in. Feel me? It's virtual, Absolutely. baby. We win us. We praying for each other. We got each other back. We motivating each other. Plug into the wall. Let's charge up. We won't never quit. We won't never fold. We was born winners. And that's just how it go. Anybody that tried to count us out couldn't count. God damn it. Period. <laughs> I love it. I'd drink on air right now if we could, Ross. I'd toast to you right now. Oh, no, we're doing us a virtual one. Let's do us a virtual one. It's going to be in our mind. Yeah, yeah. And wherever everybody at, wherever y'all let and y'all going to have y'all a little celebration. We're going to have a toast and just bring bread and rosé up. You know what I'm saying? And shit, we're going to make sure we do it and we stay in touch, man. And you can hit us at, at Bel Air, at McQueen, at Bamboo, at Vion, at Brett Barry CEO. Anybody wants to be a brand ambassador in Germany, in Dallas, anywhere, hit us up. We're always looking for supporters, people who believe in what we're doing. And uh, let's continue to drive it but, and go big. Man. So, of course, I admire you both because uh, y'all just keep up coming with new and innovative ways to kind of take things to the next level. So, uh, Rick and Brett, can you can you share any other projects you got on the horizon? I'm going to be any honest. Exclusives? I let Brett, any chief, chief chat I, exclusives? I let Brett come up with the ideas, you know, because he know a lot of times I think his artwork be unattractive. You know what I'm saying? So, but I always could depend on the product. The taste is the best. So that's why he my brother and that's why he the best friend and business partner, you know. Um, but other than that, man, um, I'm just excited for this upcoming year because I could feel it. And when yeah. Brett started dressing really weird, the train track overalls and all that. I know it's going to be something big, and I, I feel it. I trust them, and I'm ready to go. I'm excited. Lord willing, we get to see this new year, and we're going to go harder. We're going to push ourselves harder, and that means we get we deserve to celebrate harder. Hey, Chief, do you think Ross has an issue with the way I dress? No, uh, <laughs> no, nah, nah, I don't see I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> but the beauty is, ready? This is for everyone out there. Don't change. You got to you got to be you. You got to be you. But I've got we got a whole bunch of new stuff coming. I got a brand new brand Ross knows about. We're going to announce in January in a brand new category Ooh. that's crush it. It's the coolest thing. It's the best tasting. It's amazing. It's we're launching. Ready, Chief? This is new. We'll be launching it in 80 countries day one. That's how excited oh, people wow. are about it. 80 countries. World, worldwide. Worldwide. And it's 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 not we're not forcing it. People are asking for it. So uh, beyond beyond excited. Uh can't wait. It's the newest baby. And hopefully every year we got a new baby coming coming and, and releasing to the world. So uh if you have us back on, we'll share you the next brand, all right? Okay. Yeah. Listen, that that is a deal, and uh, and you can you can find uh, that bottle you've been holding up in our in our local uh, exchange as well right now. So, uh, y'all, you know, all my service members, you know, we always we, we frequent our we call it the class six in the military. It's it, it's it's the best class in the world, and and uh, class we drinking six. responsibly though. Yeah, that class six though. Yeah. <laughs> y'all might catch me one night walking out the class six. <laughs> <laughs> we crush it at the exchanges we love the exchanges this is we love love the exchanges bel air crushes it bamboo crushes it this is your your home for us no and we appreciate the partnership and uh just all, all you do to you know provide for our military community uh but i do want to let our chief chat viewers know that this episode will be available on youtube and spotify you can rewatch with your friends and catch up with past episodes also, be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. Central on Tuesday, December 6th, when we welcome sports analysts John Sadick and Ross Tucker to the show uh, to talk about the Army-Navy game. Also, tune in at 11 a.m. Central on Tuesday, Tuesday, December 13th, when Miranda Kwok and Melissa Carter of Fox's The Cleaning Lady joins the chat. So, uh, Brett and Rick, man, you know, you be, you've spent the last 40 minutes with us, and um, I mean, we could talk to y'all all freaking day, but I know y'all got some stuff 
it, that you, you got going on and, and some, something in the, you cooking up in the lab and and you got another new release coming out and so i don't want to hold you too long but i just really want you to uh know that how much i appreciate and and we appreciate uh you all taking the time to to just you know to just chat with us today man sometimes we got to take our time out and make sure it's clear we appreciate uh, our brothers and i appreciate you brother thank you for having me and uh we didn't get to mention this yet but um god did grammy nominated dj Khaled, yeah. rose uh when we yeah. go to them grammys when we pull it home we're gonna come back on the show and we're gonna uh pull up to that uh what it is chap what it is six chief six what it is oh class six the class six oh, class six I'm pulling class up to six that baby class six. when we pull that <laughs> grammy home baby when we pull that grammy home but man one time for all our brothers and everybody tuned in real talk man Number of love from Rose, number of love, and I salute. And uh, you know, do your thing. Stay healthy. Absolutely. Chief Tiana, thank you for everything. We as I said, we've been looking forward to this a long time. Uh and and Rod's put it best. Anything we can do, please ask. Uh love and support uh, all the military members, all the servicemen, all the families, uh, everybody, especially during this holiday season. Absolutely. And if you don't mind, if you don't mind, a kind of, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kiana. Oh, I think you're on mute, Kiana. We can't hear you, Kiana. We got to hear you. Kiana, we. <laughs> okay. Well, Kiana, say, Kiana said, man, thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, and she fangirling over there. She absolutely love y'all. And if y'all don't mind hanging on just for a second till after the live, so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes. But I just want to tell y'all again, thank you so much. Uh, much, many blessings to you and your family during this holiday season. And we appreciate you. Uh, and, and Chief Chat out.